How many times have you spent hours trying to craft the perfect incident report or email only for someone to turn around and ask you to explain it in plain English or to try and break down the concept further? Or how many times have you tried to explain a complex security concept to a non-technical person and they just stared at you blankly? Yet most of us have been there and today we're going to see if we can try and fix that. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Joshua Clark, and on this channel, we dive deep into cybersecurity and ethical hacking concepts. Today, we're tackling a crucial aspect of our work, and that's communication. We'll be setting up Olama, a powerful tool that allows you to run large language models or LLMs directly on your local machine, giving you full control and privacy. An LLM is essentially an AI that's trained on vast amounts of text data, enabling it to understand and generate human-like text. They're incredibly useful for simplifying complex topics, summarizing information, and drafting content, all things that are very useful to a security analyst. Now, why would you want to run the LLM locally? Well, in cybersecurity, data privacy is obviously paramount, and sending sensitive information to external LLM services can expose your data to potential risks. Unless your company has a very specific service that is already whitelisted for you to be able to send this information to, running it locally is the best option. You maintain complete control and ensure that your data stays within your own network. This also gives you the benefits of customization. You can fine tune the LLM to your specific needs, Plus, you're not dependent on an internet connection. However, keep in mind that running a local LLM requires decent hardware, especially RAM and a good CPU or even a GPU. And let's be honest, many of us in a highly technical role, myself included, are fantastic at the technical side of things, but sometimes struggle to quickly and effectively communicate complex concepts to less technical people. This is another area where the local LLM can really help. All right, so let's get started. First, you'll want to download Alama. So go to the Alama website, alama.com, and download the version that's applicable to your OS. I'm using Windows, so I'm going to download the Windows version. Here, you can see it's automatically detected that I'm using Windows. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Download for Windows. That's gonna start a download, and once that's finished, I will go through the setup process. Okay, so now that the installer has finished downloading, I'm going to go through the installation steps for Windows, which are really straightforward. The installer's open in front of me and I'm gonna hit install. And that's gonna run through the whole process. And once it's finished, we're gonna be ready to use the tool. There's not many uh, install steps here. There's literally just one button and then you can start using the tool. So the installation is finished, but I'm going to give you one bonus tip. The models by default are installed in your app data. And if your C drive is anything like mine, it's potentially getting full. So you may want to point your models to a different location. And the way that we can do that is with environment variables. So if you hit Windows R, you get the run dialog. And in here, you can type system properties advanced, and that's going to open up this window. Here you can select environment variables, and then you can add in an a variable to point your Olama models somewhere else. In this case, I've pointed it to a P drive in a folder called Olama, which I know has a lot more space than my app data. Once you're done with that, you can hit OK. And then in the next step, when you download and run models, they're going to be in the location that you've set here. Okay, so now that you have Olama installed and you've chosen where you want the models to be saved to, let's pop open a PowerShell prompt and check that the command is working. You can see here I've typed Olama and it's come back with the uh, help options. So the command that we're interested in is Olama run. If we type Olama run and then the name of a model, if it's not already on your machine, Olama's gonna go and fetch that model, download it to your machine and then run it. So where do we get the models from? Well, on the Olama website, there is this page called Models, and this has all of the open source models that are available for you to download on your machine and run locally. So this is done in uh, order of popularity. Uh, I'm gonna click on this top one. Uh, it says it's 
the most capable model that runs on a single GPU. I've got a single GPU, so that sounds like a good fit. You will notice that there are a few different options here. Tools, embedding, and vision. These are different capabilities for the model. So if you want the model to be able to handle images, you're going to need one that has uh, vision. If you want it to start um, running functions, you're going to need tools. But for this example, we're just going to go into this top model. Here you can see that there's different variations of the model. Um, we're going to go for the one that's default here of 3.3 gig. But if you have a more powerful machine, the model will be more capable as you ratchet up the size. So we're going to go for the 4B model. And here you can see that it gives you the command. So we're going to run this in our command prompt. And you'll see that it's going to go and start fetching that model. Once that's finished, it will run the model and we'll be ready to interact with it. While we're waiting for that to run, you'll notice that every single model has a readme. And those readmes uh, have a lot of different information about the model. They have stuff about benchmarking, how it compares to other models, and um, just a lot of information so you can try and select the model that's right for you. Okay, so the model has finished downloading and it's now prompting us to send it a message. So congratulations, you've just installed Olama and you are now running a local model. So let's see if this works by saying hello. Awesome, so that has replied instantly to our question. As cool as that is, Using the command line interface isn't going to be as useful as if we're able to render the responses. So the good thing about Olama is it exposes the local LLMs as an API on your local machine. What that means is we can build UIs over the top of it, or we can run open source UIs that have been created locally so that we can interact with the models better. So that's where this solution comes in. This is open web UI. And what we can do is we can run this and it's going to give us a UI where we can interact with the model and our responses will look nicer and it will be easier to use the model. The easiest way for us to install this is going to be with Docker. So head over to the Docker website and download Docker Desktop. Install the version for your system follow all of the installation prompts. And then what we can do is we can go back to the command line and run the Docker command that they provide us in the GitHub page. So here, if Olama is on your computer, use this command. What we can do is we can then go and run this and it's gonna fetch the Docker container, the image, and it will run open web UI for us. Once your Docker run command has finished, you should see open web UI running inside of Docker desktop. From here, you can click on the link and it will take you to the web UI. Because I've already got the Olama model Gemma free running, Open Web UI has picked this up using the local APIs and I can now interact directly with the LLM using this web interface. So if I say hello, we should see the response rendered into this web interface. As you can see, this is similar to what we saw before in the command line, but this is going to be a lot more usable. We have edit options, copy options, and it will render the text in a nice way. So there's so many different ways that you can go back and forth with an LLM to try and improve your communication in cybersecurity. You can ask it to help improve your emails. You can ask it to help improve your messages. You can ask it to come up with analogies. Uh, you can upload files and get it to digest reports. I'm just going to show you a quick example of a really silly email that none of you would ever write. I'm sure you could do a lot better than this without an LLM. Uh, but just to sort of show the power of what an LLM can do for you, I'm just going to ask it to rewrite this email in a professional and clear way while still showing urgency. Um, the email just says, hey, you've got TeamViewer on your machine. It's totally banned. Uh, please get rid of it ASAP and uh, let us know if you're intentionally using it. Thanks, the cybersecurity team. So let's see what the LLM comes up with. So, uh, I mean, the subject straight away is better. We didn't have one. 
uh, and it's just written the email out better. So what I'd recommend with this sort of thing is uh, come up with a nicely structured email, how you would normally send things. And then if you have a certain sentence that you're not quite sure about and you just want it to be worded better, just ask the LLM to do that for you. So for example, let's just grab a sentence here and uh, ask it to iterate. Uh, let's just say, please write this better. And you haven't really given it a lot of context on what writing it better means. If you have a specific thing that you want to do, you want to change the tone, you want to make it more accessible for different audiences, just tell it that and then give it the text that you want to change. So for example, it's given you a few different options here. As I say, the results are going to vary depending on which model you're using, what the prompt is, but I'm hoping that you can see how really powerful this is. And the fact that it's running locally on your machine means that you have to, um, you don't have to worry as much about entering data online and having it leave your host uh, to some third party service. Remember that even with a local LLM, you need to review the output for accuracy and ensure that it aligns with your organization's policies. Local LLMs are great, but they still have limitations. They can hallucinate, they can just get things plainly wrong. So always validate the data and use these tools responsibly. Using Olama and local LLMs can definitely enhance your cybersecurity communication skills. They can also be useful for lots of different things like reviewing code or digesting reports, all sorts of things that you can imagine. But the main thing here was getting that LLM downloaded locally so you can run it without worrying about data privacy, which is a trade-off of using online LLMs and chatbot platforms. I encourage you to experiment with different models and prompts to find what works best for you. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and drop in the comments if you have any experiences with Olama or local LLMs or if you've got any effective prompts or models that you find really helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.